This project is um, one kindly donated by Mark um, that I've massacred into, uh, <laughs> into place with uh, all the libraries that we had access to, because Mark has the largest collection of sample libraries known to man. Um, so it's typical contacts, Omnispheres, um, BBC Symphony Orchestra plugins, that kind of thing loading up here. Yes. All that the same on the machine. Yeah, so we've got the same audio interface, so an army baby face on each machine. They're all set to a 64 sample buffer, which I know is wow. lower than you would typically be working, but I'm wanting to kind of stretch what, what's going on. What, what sample rate are you in now? 48. 48. So again, a very um, <coughs> clear difference in, in the processing speed, even between the, the Mac Mini mm. and the, um, and the um, older Mac Pro. What Logic does is that anything that is running live audio, so a, um, an open record audio track or a um, instrument that is armed ready to receive MIDI input, is run at a low sample buffer in order to give you that low latency thing. Every other track is run with a much, much higher buffer, but that doesn't matter because there's no nothing live going through it, so Logic can, to some extent, pre-compute what's going on. Exactly, it's, it's still in sync, behind the scenes, it's but behind the buffering. scenes, it's, it's doing things with a much larger buffer in order to give it much more leeway in terms of getting all the calculations ready in right. order to end up in sync with that, with that live thing. It's particularly noticeable on the Mac Mini here for, for some reason. All the left-hand um, processor cores are the tracks that are, as it were, in that background. The one on the right-hand side is the one that's um, currently ready to, to receive live input. At the moment, they're all highlighted on the same contact instrument. It may be if we actually try and play something. There we go. There all three of those machines there are spiking in order to, to process that um, that live instrument and like you find that's something that we commonly find with with clients calling up with a problem of, of glitching and so on is most of the cores are quite happily tickling along but that right hand core is pegging because they're trying to play a hungry instrument live and that's one of the big issues that people are wanting to, to resolve with a new machine it's something we've done some tests on. It's true to say that the current generation of Macs, pretty much all of them, handle that that live track better than than the Mac Pro now. So even the um, the Mac Mini here handles it better than than the 2013 Mac Pro in terms of that live track. Beyond that, there's not a great difference between the current machines as to how much that live track can handle. They're, they're broadly similar um, performance, but even between you know, a lowly machine and an expensive machine like that as to, as to how much that live track can do. Is that stipulated by the speed of the, the, the single core? 
so you might have eight chords, but there's a C. Is it to do with it's that number? Pretty much, yes. So it's the um, it's the the speed of the processor. Um, it's it's turbo boost figure. You will see that you know if you're looking through the um, the things, it will say oh, 3.2 gigahertz, but with turbo boost to 4.4 gigahertz. That's allowing the process to to spin up one of the cores in order to um, get more performance from that one as 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 required. Can't do that across all the cores because then it gets just gets too hot. But it can do that with one core as as demand um, goes. And of course, the generation of processor is is important. You know, the newer machines have the newer processors have newer instructions that allow it to deal with complex things in hardware more that the older processors might have to have, you know take more time to think about.